G'day, welcome back. It's uh, Anjol from Anjol's Giardino. Uh, and in this video, we're going to improve upon my compost bin situation. So what I have been using is these two wheelie bins, which I've cut off the bottoms and set into the ground. And although they're good, they're functional, um, they're a little bit small. And with the upcoming maintenance I'm going to be doing to the chicken coop soon, soon I'm going to be raking back all the peanut shell that's inside here and I'm going to need uh, somewhere a little bit larger to be able to deposit the peanut shell and allow that to break down with the other materials that I throw in there. Uh, with my compost bin I throw in a lot of food scraps, uh, whatever I don't give to the chickens goes in the compost bins. Uh, I throw in all the, the chicken poo from the actual coop itself which I'll take you around and show you. Um, all the sugarcane mulch that I use inside the uh, quail enclosure also gets uh, distributed into the um, compost bins. You can see here with the poo, once every couple of weeks I'll actually come with the shovel, collect that and throw that into the uh, compost bins as well. So it's going to become um, important that I have a little bit more space for my compost bins and I also have seen a couple of very good uh, ideas with three bay compost bins. So I've had to buy some material, but I'm also going to use a fair bit of scrap that I have lying around the home to, to be able to make this uh, three bay compost bin system. So let's get into it. So the location I've chosen for the uh, compost bins is where you might have seen before I removed a shipping container from this area and moved it towards the front side of the house. Um, this area here I gurneyed, cleaned up all the fence and I was going to give it a coat of the aqua deck uh, to, to beautify the area. Um, but you can see behind me I, I held off and in hindsight that was a, a great idea because I wanted to see how this area would cope with all the droppings from this bamboo tree and you can see that you know over the course of a couple of weeks it's actually quite significant and you know I don't really want to be cleaning up bamboo leaves off of uh, raised garden beds that I had originally intended on putting in here so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put that um, three bay compost bin here um, it's not necessarily the most ideal thing to actually have your compost bin resting on concrete however if it's a three bay bin and I'm going to get a shovel in it to turn it over into the next bay running a flat blade shovel over the, your concrete is going to make it a lot easier for me to be able to turn that material so you know it, it it's not in contact with the ground um, you know which might not be the most ideal scenario there for a lot of gardeners out there however uh, the very very back edge of this slab is in contact with the earth so I would imagine that any earthworms or or things can still contact the ground and come out it also might be an area that um, ends up leaching a lot of that good uh, juices probably will go down there and a little bit of that compost uh, uh, material may uh, go to waste However, it's still going to work out to be likely the most practical spot for myself. Um, so this is where we're going to set up our three bay compost bin. So let's get into it.
Well guys, uh, that's it for me for day one of our three bay compost bin uh, build. Uh, you can see the actual structure has gone up now and you can see the, um, the old rusted iron that I've put on there. Uh, it's upcycled iron that I've um, salvaged from my neighbor's house. This is the same uh, iron that I utilized for the build of the chicken coop um, all that time ago now. So uh, it, it's good to, to upcycle and salvage. And in fact, the only way that I would probably recommend doing this if you wanted to upcycle and uh, not actually spend money would be to use the pallets. Uh, but not just any old pallets. You want to try to get something that's a little bit uniform. And if you were to do it that way, you would use the pallets as the sides, like what I've got here, side, side. So you need one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you could actually make a really good three bay compost bin utilizing seven pallets with upcycled iron, which generally you get for free. Everyone dumps it, um, usually at their, their local council dumps for free because it is uh, steel, and steel is free to dump. Um, so if you had the time and you wanted to to actually accumulate those pallets and do it that way, that's, that's a good idea. Uh, however, I wanted to, uh, in this long weekend that we have, uh, get something built, clean the, the chook pen, so take all the peanut shell that I have in there and utilize it straight away inside the three bays that I have. Uh, but I also still have um, my regular compost bins, which are not quite fully uh, uh, cured, if you want to use that word. So I still want to give them a little bit more time breaking down. Um, the other very interesting thing that I read and um, have watched from other different uh, YouTubers online is that to, to create a good heat inside your compost you want to get uh, biomass which is um, I think something that smaller compost bins are not quite going to achieve it can do it I've felt inside it before and it has felt hot um, but I don't think it's it's reaching the temperatures that are required to to give it that full heat to start using the enzymes to break down break down properly anyway um, so that's it for today and uh, we'll get back into it tomorrow tomorrow what we'll add is the garden edging so on the outside here I plan to utilize the garden edging and I'll probably give that a good coat of aquadec uh, on the top side I think I'm just going to put some shade cloth which I've got um, some spare that's just been kind of resting in a big pile here to uh, to cover some, some trash that I had and um, I might just put shade cloth over the top of it I will probably cap the tops with some of that garden edging though just to finish it off and make sure none of my kids fingers get caught on any of this rusty iron okay well see you for day two so it's day two of our uh, three bay compost bin build and uh, I've actually run out of this nice rusty old iron. So what I'll do today is I think I'm going to take off a couple of these sheets that I have on the inside of the compost bin and put them to the outside just there so that way I can still maintain that uh, old upcycled look if you will. Uh, very, very similar to what they do out on the cattle stations or on on a lot of the outback properties in Australia, which uh, that kind of aesthetic I love. So what we'll do is uh, I originally intended I'd clad the outside, um, but as it's just a project of kind of winging it as we go with the mishmash of materials that we have, I think I'm gonna keep those sheets and put them to the outside and replace those um, aesthetically rusted sheets with a couple of the, uh, the better conditioned iron, uh, roofing sheets that I have left over. So we'll fluff around with that, then we'll get into cutting the, um, the front section out and putting in a little uh, system of cleats where I can drop in the slats to maintain that compost. Um, so day two, here we go.
Well guys, that's our three bay compost bin built, um, bar the final uh, bay at the end there, which is okay because that's the finishing bay. But we've got first bay, second bay, and the top of the third bay complete. Uh, we've got our vermin proof mesh on top, uh, as well as the shade cloth. So in the afternoon, this area does get quite a fair bit of sun. Um, and if I do have uh, moist, wet, or compost that's trying to break down, don't want it to dry out too much with that brutal sunshine that we do get um, so I'll show you the practicality of it just here I've got my little coat hangers which we use to open them up you can see the mesh there on the inside and grass clippings and so on that I've put in there so far now I showed you before how these guillotine doors they just lift straight up and I can drop them straight back down I won't lift this one here up because it does have a bit of product in there at the moment um, but it's only half full, so the next fun part is uh, finding some more material to actually use to fill it up and I know just the place to start, which is going to be our chicken coop. So let's get into it and we'll uh, begin to fill up this bad boy. Well, that's the um, first compost bin uh, done. I just cleaned out the chicken coop and threw the um, big parts of the poo in there. Uh, there's always more I could add to it whenever I maybe cut the grass or, or do a little bit more pruning. Uh, if I had a chipper, I'd probably get some of the coconut um, palms and fronds, as well as the foxtail palms and fronds, and I'd probably chip them up and uh, throw that in here as well too. That would make a, a really good mulch something really good to add to your your compost bin um, but we still have the the previous or the older compost um, which I'm going to bring you around and show you now which we need to add into perhaps the second bay so this compost here that was our original compost bins uh, and they uh, will need to be transferred 
from this position back over to where our compost bins are sitting uh, currently. There's our three bay uh, compost bins totally complete now and uh, that's going to be it for me on this video. Uh, you'll see that I've got the, the first bay here now almost full. Once that's entirely full then I'll give it the 30 days uh, to start to break down before I uh, bring it over here to the second bay. You can see that we've um, emptied the old compost bins and put that here in the second bay. Again we'll give that 30 days. Uh, the same time frame as this and then as I flip this one over or then flip this one into that bay and so on and so forth down the line. But the only thing that we'll need to finish and I'll do that again at my own time is just the vermin proof mesh here to keep our compost in as well as the uh, shake off. But you can see that we've got a little system ready to rock and roll and um, I'm excited to be able to, to show you the compost as it actually happens and as I use it on the garden. So uh, thanks for tuning in and um, I'll catch you on the next one and uh, cheers.